does the circle have zero points or an infinite number of points? Well, it turns out this discussion is pointsless because we'll never know. Today, we're going to explore circles, starting off with circle area, and we'll explore how to find the area of these complex circular shapes over here. Let's start off with the basics, which I'm sure you're familiar with. The area of a circle is pi r squared. Circumference is 2 pi r. And if you have a sector, we just multiply by the angle divided by 360 for both the area and circumference. And we could also write it as a over 2 pi if we're dealing with radians, where a is the degrees in radian, or a is a measure of the angle in radians. Let's take this cool example from the ANC test. Two distinct lines passing through the center of three concentric circles of radii 3, 2, and 1. So this circle has a radii of 1, this circle radii 2, and the big one 3. Right? And I'm not going to mark it in the diagram because it will cause a little bit too much clutter, but just remember that the small one is 1, medium is 2, and the big one is 3. The area of the shaded region is 8 thirteenths the area of the unshaded region. What's the radian measure of the acute angle formed by two lines? So let's actually do this with degrees first, and then we can convert to radians to make it easier to understand. So if this is theta, let's say it's theta. Then we have that this, this over here will be 180 minus theta. This will be 180 minus theta, minus theta, right? So first of all, what's the area of this, the smallest shaded regions? Area of this. These, what are the area of these regions over here? Well, because they both have arcs of theta and the radius of the small circle is one, it, it's just going to be pi r squared, so pi times one squared, which is just one, times the angle pi over or theta over 360 times 2, because there's two arcs, the left one and the right one. And we can simplify this, cancel, cancel, to get pi over one, or theta over 180 times pi. So theta over 180 times pi. That's the area of the blue region. Now, what about the area of this purple region here? Well, it's actually a very similar problem. Now, we just to find the area of each of these, each section, just like earlier, there's two sections, top and bottom. Let's first find the area of one of them. So what is the area of this region here? We can again use the circular area formulas. It's just the area of this whole sector. Well, what is the area of this whole sector? It's, well, the radius is one plus one, two, right? Remember from the problem, three, two, one. So it's going to be two squared r squared pi times the angle, which is 180 minus theta, right? 180 minus theta over 360. And then we have to subtract off the inside region because that was the region of the entire, that was the region of this entire arc. We want the area of the purple part. So we subtract off this center region, which is just 1 squared pi times 180 minus theta over 360. It's the same exact region with the radius of just 1. So we can rewrite this as 2 squared minus 1 squared times pi times 180 minus theta over 360. That's the area of one of the purple regions. But there's two of them, so times 2. We can cancel out to get 180 in the denominator over here. So this becomes 3 times 2, or 3 times, we already canceled the 2, 3 times 180 minus theta over 180 times pi. Okay, now what about the regions over here? The green ones over here. Well, we can do a very similar process. The area, what is the area of this entire sector right there? Well, the area of one of those sectors is just theta over 360 times 3 squared pi, right? Because 
3 squared pi, the area of the entire circle, times theta over 360. Okay, but like earlier, we subtract the in inside region, which is this, this arc here. All this region is extra, so we subtract theta over 360 times 2 squared pi. And this becomes 3 squared minus 2 squared times theta over 360 pi, which is 5 times theta over 360 pi. But the key thing here is to see that we also multiply by 2 again, because there's two green regions. So then we can again make it theta over 180 pi. Yeah. Okay, so now we just add them all up. Let's do that. Okay, so we add up this, this, and this. Hmm. Look, we see a lot of theta over 180 terms here, so let's just make a substitution to make our computation a bit simpler. Let's say x is theta over 180. Then we add up x pi plus, well, notice how 180 minus theta over 180 is just 1 minus theta over 180 times pi times 3, which is just 1 minus x times 3 pi. And then finally, plus 5x pi. And this is equal to, well, let's simplify this first. x pi plus 3 pi minus 3 pi x plus 5 x pi, which is 3 pi x plus 3 pi, right? 3 pi x plus 3 pi, well, that's the area of every shaded part. But we have to divide but we're given that it's equal to 8 13 the area of the unshaded region. So if all the shaded regions is 8 13 the unshaded region, that means it's 8 over 21 of the entire circle region, because the ratio of shaded to unshaded is 8 to 13, so the ratio of shaded to total is 8 to 13 plus 8 to 21. So 8 over 21 is the ratio of the shaded region to the entire circle. So we know that 3 pi x plus 3 pi, the ratio of that to 9 pi is 8 over 21. And we can cancel out 3 pi from all terms to get that x plus 1 over 3 is 8 over 21, or that 21x plus 21 is 24, or that 21x equals 3, x equals 1 7. So x equals 1 7. Theta over 180 is 1 7. So that means theta is 180 over 7, right? But we're asked, we're asked to find it in radians. And it says here pi radians is 180 degrees. So therefore, 180 over 7 degrees is just pi over 7 radians. So pi over 7 is the answer. Now we could have also solved this problem by just letting the angle be in radians, but that would make it a little confusing if you're not familiar with radians. The key idea here was just summing all these regions and then subtracting off the inside part, which we could easily find using our circle area formulas. Let's move on to a more interesting example over here. I'll move to the other corner and let's get started. As shown in the figure, line segment 80 is trisected, right there, it's trisected by points B and C, so that AB equals BC equals CD equals 2. Okay, three semicircles of radius 1. AEB, BFC, CGD have diameters on AD, like you see here. So they all have radius 1, of course, just half of 2. And they're tangent to EG at EF, tangent to the line EG at E, F, and G. So right here, they're all tangent, which means that they all form a 90 degree angle with their circle, as we learned in the previous video, in a, in a previous video, right? So they're all tangent, they're just touching at one point, so they're all 90 degrees over there. The area of the region inside the circle, but outside the three semicircles, so just the shaded region in this figure, is expressed in this form. And basically, you just find the area, and then we do an answer extraction at the end. 
So how do we find such a weird, strange looking area? So generally for these types of problems, there's two methods you can use. One is to try and break up your area into pieces. And the two is to try to find more than what you need and subtract off the extra. So what it happens if you try to find the area? What happens if you try to find the area of the circle and then subtract off this ex these extra parts? Well, it turns out that this extra part over here is actually really weird. And we really don't know how to find something like this. Because that's just a very strange shape. I mean, what is that? We really don't have any way of calculating it. We can't really calculate this area. I mean, you could use calculus, but I mean, this is not, we're not trying to do that here. So another second strategy is to break it up into pieces. So over here, we could break it up into this piece here, this piece here, this piece, the semicircle on top, and this part on the bottom. So let's try and find each of these pieces. Okay, first we know that the radius of, this is one, this is one, this is one, this is, this is one, right? This entire distance is four. So this here is four. And because we're given that, though we know that EG has to be the diameter of the circle. Because if we're given that in the problem, they are tangent to the line EG respectively, and we know the center is F. Because in the problem, it says the center is F. So we know that EG must be the diameter because they pass through F, the center. So therefore, the diameter of EG is 4, so the radius is just 2. 2. So the area of the semicircle is half times 2 squared pi. So if the area of the semicircle is half 2 squared pi, that's just 2 pi. Cool. Now, what about this region here? How do we find that area? Well, we can actually see that it's just the area of this rectangle minus these two quarter circles. So it will be, well, the radius here is 1. So 2 times 1, that's going to be the area of this rectangle, minus the area of two of those quarter circles. So minus, well, we know that two quarter circles will just make a half circle. So it's just half of the area of a circle with radius 1, right? These circles have radius 1. So half times 1 squared pi. Cool. So this will be equal to 2 minus half pi. That's the area of one of those red regions, as I marked here. So this red region is 2 minus half pi. But we have two of those regions, so 4 minus pi total, because there's the one on the left and the one on the right here. They're both the same, because they're both just a rectangle minus 2 quarter circles. So we found two of the parts, but what about this final part here? I mean, this is not a circle, it's not, it's just a weird kind of, I don't know, slice? I don't know what the name is to call it. But let's just erase all of this so we can have some more freedom in our diagram. So how do we find that bottom part over there? Well, this is actually a very standard trick. You can draw this line here and draw this line over here. So the key thing here is that this whatever part on the bottom, is just the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle over here, M minus this triangle here area. So the area, what is the area of the sector? How should we find that out? I mean, how, how can we even do that? This is R, this is 2R, hmm, so that means that if you connect that over here, let's draw this better. This will also be 2R. Hmm, so how should we even find the sector angle? So the key thing here is that we need to first find what the actual, we need to first find what the actual bottom the triangle area will be. So the, the cool thing here is that we can use 30, 60, 90 triangles. This will not be, this will not be 2R. The 2R will be till here because it's a radius, right? The radius is 2R. 
So this bottom part will be r root 3 by 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay. So that bottom part is r root 3. This is r and this is 2r by 30, 60, 90s. So the area of the triangle is just, this will also be r root 3. So just half times r times 2r root 3, half and 2 cancel, r squared root 3. That's the area of that triangular section. And the area of the arc, well, well, the reason we knew it was 30, 60, 90 was because 1 to 2 ratio, and this is a right angle because of the tangency condition. Remember? The tangency condition means this was 90, this was 90 over here, so this is 90, and this is 90, and this is 90. So, therefore, r squared root 3 is the area of the triangular region, and by 30, 60, 90, we know this is 60, and this is 60. So, it's a 120 degree arc with 2r. So the area of that is 2r squared pi times 120 over 360, because 60 plus 60, so 1 third. And this becomes 4r squared by 3 pi, right? 4r squared by 3 pi, r squared root 3, or these are the three regions that we are essentially having to sum them. Or, well, we know r, we know r in this diagram is just 1, so we can just let it be 4 thirds pi. So therefore, we just add all these quantities up and subtract off r squared root 3, which is just root 3, right? And then we can evaluate this. Let's sum it all up. 4 plus 4 thirds pi minus pi. 4 plus 4 thirds pi, this is a quantity here, 4 thirds pi minus pi, so that's the sum of these two quantities here, plus 2 pi minus root 3, right? So this becomes 4 plus 7 thirds pi minus root 3. And this is, well, the answer format is a over b times pi minus root c plus d. a over b times pi, so 7 plus 3 minus root c so minus root 3, so C is 3, A and B are 7 and 3, and D is just this extra 4. We add all these up to get 17, our answer. Great problem. Basically, the key idea was to break it up. We broke it up into three main types of regions, the semicircle on top, these two regions over here, and the bottom region here, right? And using those properties, we were able to find this region by subtracting the arcs. And we found this region by 30, 60, 90. And seeing the, we can subtract the triangle from the sector. And then we just solved. Okay, now we're going to talk about circle length. So circle length is all, all, where you're relating to length like in this problem here, where we're trying to find radii or the length of certain inscribed figures, or even this problem here, which have different radii which have different parts cut out from a circle and you're trying to find the distances in the circle and circle length is very important on the AMT 1012 but we'll be looking at it this video right there